today we're gonna make a uh, pasta carbonara uh, and we'll do it kind of a nouveau blend of Tom Cruise style and Mario Batali style. So we have bacon, uh, garlic, I have uh, a shallot instead of onion because I prefer the taste of shallots to onions, um, Parmesan Reggiano uh, cheese which we will go ahead and uh, microplane and then we have four eggs and I'll do the eggs uh, Mario Batali style and of course we have uh, spaghetti and so we'll get started. So with the garlic, we're gonna go ahead and just press out the bulb. And as you can see, if you have a fairly fresh garlic, um, the bulb will kind of break up into uh, cloves. And we'll go ahead and uh, we're gonna thin slice it. Um, and so I wanna pick out the slightly bigger cloves. And I want them to stay whole, so you'll notice I'm not gonna smash them, but um, I will show you how to go ahead and uh, peel. I'm not the greatest garlic peeler in the world, because uh, I have very few, uh, I don't really have nails. But how you peel a garlic is like this. Um, garlic's crescent shaped, so let me make sure focus is good. Um, garlic is crescent shaped, and so what you wanna do is go ahead, I usually have the thumb on the uh, root end, and what you want to do, and I hope I can get this on camera, if you press, it'll break open, right? So that's how we're, um, and then we go ahead and peel because we want the whole garlic, you want to be slicing. Let me go ahead and do one more just to show you. Uh, if you just press it, the garlic opens up um, and we want it whole. So let me do one more just to show you and then I'll go ahead and do all of them off camera. So if you just press the garlic like that on the crescent side, um, the garlic will peel fairly easily. Sorry about that. Um, so we went ahead and peeled, uh, what do I have? I have six cloves of garlic uh, off camera. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the dicing. I'm gonna thin slice it. And I know the recipe calls for diced um, garlic, but I like thin sliced garlic because it just tastes really good. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the ends on all of them. So we don't end up chewing on them in the food. And, uh, and then we'll go ahead and thin slice them. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and try to thin slice them longitudinally, so the long way, okay? And I guess if you can, you can get a, you know, a small uh, knife and just carefully make sure every single piece is uh, equal size and equal thickness, but um, I'm not a restaurant, nor do I care to be. It's fine. Um, we're gonna go ahead and throw in the, uh, in a, a lot of uh, olive oil, and it's gonna fry up, and it's gonna be delicious, so. So, um, with, with prep work, you really just wanna, you know, um, get through it as quickly as possible, because, um, I know a lot of people just suck at prep work and that's why they hate cooking and for me I think you just as far as knife work just got to get the, get it all done so um, we have our thin sliced uh, garlic and again that was about six cloves well I'm not Italian I do believe that no such thing as too much garlic so put as much as you want and so um, with the garlic done we're gonna go ahead and move up to shallots now I can be a pompous arrogant uh, ass from Paris and say things like, oh, amateurs cook with onions, but uh, real professionals cook with uh, shallots. So shallots are basically, if you know what a shallot is, um, it's basically if an onion and garlic decided to have a baby, basically it would be a shallot. Um, it has concentric rings like uh, an onion, but it's shaped kind of like a garlic. So as near as I can kind of say, it's pretty much, uh, the cross between a garlic and an onion. Now the uh, shallot is not as sweet as an onion, but the flavor is a lot more complex. And I find, um, and not just myself, you'll find that a lot of uh, Taiwan, traditional Taiwanese recipes call for fried uh, shallots. So we go ahead and uh, clean off the shallot. We're gonna remove that uh, dry tip. And now this skin is a little bit rubbery on the outside, the first layer. And uh, what I usually do here is, um, I use a technique and I'm gonna show you on camera, but it's a little dangerous, so um, so be careful. We wanna, I have my knife here and I have the butt end of my knife and I'm gonna score it with the uh, shallot, but I actually, because you don't wanna press hard and then slice open your hand, so I'm gonna have the knife stationary and I'm gonna move the shallot 
through the knife. Again, so just a thin cut, that way it allows me to peel that top skin open. And then um, like an onion, basically, and like I said, here you go. You see in the bulb, there's other bulbs, so it's more like a garlic on the inside, but it's got concentric rings like, a, um, like an onion. Now, you have two choices, right? You can cut it like this, and that will be little rings, um, like little onion rings, or in this case, shallot rings. But what happens is the fiber is really, really thin here because that's how you're cutting and so if you cut it like that it will kind of disintegrate so it'd be flavorful but um, there will not be a lot of shallots left in the pan afterwards so what we're going to do is we're going to cut the tail off and we're going to cut it longitudinally again so we can go ahead and fry it as well so we go ahead and cut off the tail and there's two pieces so we'll go ahead and work on um, one at a time now shallots going to shrink about to about a quarter of the size when um, after it's slightly fried um, or sauteed. And so we're gonna go ahead and leave it just as long as it is right now. And we'll go ahead and thin slice it. Um, when we get toward the part where our finger might be cut off because there's very little to hold, I just go ahead and turn it over and then just finish it out. on the big one as well. And we're, we're slicing with fiber, so um, when we saute, there will be something left in the pan. And so that's a choice you have to make whenever you cut uh, onions or uh, shallots, is uh, which side of the fiber you want to be on. And for me, because I like to uh, eat uh, fried uh, shallots, it's delicious, um, I go ahead and slice it longitudinally. I see a little bit of tail I don't want. Um, and we just go ahead and finish it up. All right, so that's our onions and our shallot. Um, like I said, your knife is sharp. The uh, you shouldn't be crying because it does release a little bit of uh, uh, acid, like uh, onions do. But uh, if your knife is sharp, your knife is good. You should not be crying. So. Um, we're moving on to the bacon portion of this, and uh, let me see, probably a eh, um, couple strips of bacon. I think my wife and my kids like bacon, so I will just go ahead and use all the bacon, because why not? So in the bacon, um, if you if you watch uh, Martin Yen and people like Martin Yen um, and butchers, they have a specific. Uh, draw cut and pat for for meat and uh, sometimes I have to use it because bacon is just a little bit hard to so you have a regular push cut but a lot of them will just press 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 so we're cutting about I would say three quarters of a centimeter uh, in width and we're gonna go ahead and uh, saute these up so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to do it kind of like Tom Cruise does, which is uh, I'm going to put the uh, bacon, the garlic, and the shallots uh, into a into a sa large saute pan with a lot of olive olive oil, and we're going to do it at low heat, so we can go ahead and render the fat from here and also. Um, extract the volatile organic compounds from the garlic and the shallots and getting a little bit crunchy so we can uh well they'll be delicious basically like little um, garlic chips and uh shallot chips uh, before we get to the uh stove side of things i forgot uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, break open our eggs we're going to separate the egg whites which is what we're going to use for a thickener uh when we take the pasta off the heat and we're going to separate the uh, we're going to do it uh, Mario Batali style so we're going to go ahead and uh, split out the egg yolks and uh, put the egg yolks on top or try to um, when we're finished so I'm going to try not to screw this up on camera but uh, we'll see right We're going to go ahead and separate the uh, egg yolk 
Uh, there's a back crack already, but that's all right. It's all right. And all we have left is the egg yolk, as you can see. Now, what Mario does, which I think is kind of cool, so I'm going to do it because the kids will get giddy about it, is he has a bowl of flour, and then you just rest the, uh, what you call it, then everybody gets an egg, uh, everybody gets an egg uh, yolk, basically. Let's see if we split this one down the middle a little better. Yes, we did. It's all right. So we're going to go ahead and leave these bad boys in the uh, flower bed there. Ooh. These are all organic eggs and the shells are much, much tougher to crack and so when you crack it, they crack really fine or, or I should say they don't crack really fine and so it's really difficult to just get the, um, get it to split dead center. But that's all right, I'm doing a decent job last one and so we'll have four eggs and then we'll go ahead and um microplane some uh, parmesan into the uh into the egg white here in a few minutes so we have our egg white we have our egg white and we have our egg yolks sitting in their original shells so if you can focus there and uh in a bed of flour so let me go ahead and go get the microplane. I'll be back. So we're back with the uh, microplane. I actually have two kinds. I have the white one and the thin one. And uh, we have our Parmesan Reg Reggiano. Um, Reggiano, I can't say it. Um, and uh, so we're going to go ahead and plane some in. I'm going to use the wide one because it's easier. And uh, we're going to go ahead and plane some um, cheese into it. And any grater will do, but if you microplane it, it's just easier to mix because it's uh, microplaned. And uh, cheese is fairly pungent and will give a strong flavor and uh, also provide us with uh, some uh, goopiness and uh, thickening agent basically we'll use the cheese and the egg white as the thickening agent when we do uh, when we pour it on the noodles now the part about uh, pasta carbonara is the fact that uh, it's it's laced with eggs um, it's doped with eggs but uh, the eggs are put on after the fact um, when the pasta is removed from heat because uh, I just lost my because if you have it on high heat, then the egg whites will end up turning into egg white, cooked egg whites. And so um, that's not what we want. What we want is to uh, have the egg whites, the proteins on the egg whites act as a thickener. There's something in between here. What is that? Um, and uh, we're almost done planing the uh, cheese. And uh, how much cheese? I don't know. However much you like. Uh, the recipe is fairly... Uh, the portions are not the most important part. It's the fact that you get most of the ingredients in uh, is going to be the important part. And uh, we'll lose it some. And so I am, all right, I'm just about done here. Planning, let me grab the, let me go ahead and grab the, uh, I should have grabbed earlier, uh, whisk and uh, we'll go ahead and whisk the uh, cheese into the egg white. And you have this egg white cheese slurry that looks somewhat horrible, but will be delicious. So we have our egg whites ready and uh, we'll go ahead and move over to the stove now. So we're, we have a more than ample amount of uh, olive oil in here. We put in our bacon and we want to keep the heat fairly low. We're going to go ahead and drop in our uh, garlic, a thinly sliced garlic, and we're going to go ahead and drop in our um, shallots. And we want to render everything. 
um, basically get the moisture out of it and uh, concentrate the flavor. And uh, this is the part where I talk about uh, using really good quality olive oil because uh, this dish is, well, all Italian dishes um, are going to depend on how good your olive oil is. And uh, if you don't know what the olive oil conspiracy is, uh, you should go online and search for it. It's, it's some ridiculous number, like 70% of all olive oil is fake. So um, go ahead and make sure you're getting yourself a non-fake olive oil. So we're gonna go ahead and heat this guy up. Again, low heat, because I don't want to actually cook these, these things. I want to render the water out of it, is my uh, goal here. And while we're doing that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, probably drop in the pasta. So I'll see you in a little bit. So we're at the five minute mark. I had, when I started this, I went ahead and put in um, some uh, noodles to cook and we'll cook it to about nine minutes, just shy of uh, al dente, so we'll finish out in the pot. Now, I know Mario Batali talks about al dente because he's Italian, but my kids like their noodles a little bit softer than al dente, so I usually cook it to pretty much uh, full-cooked pasta and then put it in the pan. Um, apologies to the Italians viewers out there. But you can see we're not, um, we're not trying to uh, deep fry, we're just trying to render and the garlic hasn't burnt, and that's not what we don't want. But um, we get really good rendering from the uh, bacon, and uh, I'm not burn myself. Um, it's actually pretty salty from the bacon already, but I'll go ahead and uh, salt it right now so I can extract even more uh, water out of it. So a pinch of, uh, a little pinch of salt more. And so we'll go ahead and check back in when we're ready with the uh, noodles. So, let me see if I can get this focus. There we go. Um, so we're right about there. We've rendered this for about 10 minutes. Um, the uh, timer's going to go off behind me. I'm going to go ahead and check that noodle right now and see if um, how we're doing with the noodle as far as uh, whether or not it's cooked. But as you can see, things are not a little bit brown, but not burnt, which is the way we want it. And the noodle is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, probably hear the alarm go off. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move the noodle closer so I can use the tongs and just tongue it into the, uh, the pan here. If you think it's a little bit dry, you can go ahead and scoop a little bit of a noodle water in, but I doubt it. That bad boy be oily. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, tongue in the noodles. Like I said, if you think it's getting a little dry, go ahead and scoop just a little bit of uh, pasta water in there. Move this guy over. Splash my stuff. <clears throat> and uh, yep. that smells great. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get that. Uh, get the hot noodle with its uh, pores all open to go ahead and suck in all the uh, grease, delicious, greasy deliciousness that is bacon, uh, shallots, and garlic. So once we uh, have everything nice and coated, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and this part's gonna go a little bit fast. We're gonna go ahead and uh, take the uh, pan off the heat in a few seconds and then we're gonna go ahead and dump in our remember our uh, egg white and uh, parmesan mixture so here we go off with the heat i'll probably move it off slightly so it's not egg white is in and we're going to go ahead and mix that as fast as we can so it does not cook we don't actually want to cook one to thicken right we can thicken. Oh, thicken. Oh, 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 oh. I 
that's a little too hot. Uh, we'll get egg onto the noodles, but the cheese running. Pasta going and the garlic and the shallots going. So there we go. Right? We're never gonna put it back on the heat. We go ahead and have this white just, just like that. That is looking pretty good. Alrighty, so our pasta is done except for our egg. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate one. Grab a plate. Try not to burn yourself. Go ahead and grab some noodle. So rotate that back like this, like this, like this, with a little bird's nest hole in the middle, a little bit of a chocolate on the side, a little bit of garlic on the side, Let's see here, and then we're going to go ahead and remember our egg yolks. We're going to go ahead and do it. Oh, let me see. I'll find a small one here. Mario Batali style. Drop in an egg yolk in there. And there you have it. Pasta Cabanera Mario Batali slash Tom Cruise style. Obligatory taste test. I actually didn't record. I broke the yolk. I'll take another mouthful. It's pretty good.